Republicans are lining up behind the president, who tweeted early in the day that the impeachment is, quote, an assault on America. And after weeks of closed door depositions, Democrats are certainly looking forward to bringing this investigation out of the shadows and into the public eye. For hours, they detailed their experiences while working under the Trump administration and called what they witnessed alarming. Coming up, I'll tell you why critics say the investments could fall short. With the teen vaping epidemic soaring, Senator Mitch McConnell and the president have both become vocal advocates of a Tobacco 21 plan. It's been two months since President Trump ordered the FDA to draft a plan that would ban flavored vaping products. The White House says it's still encouraging people to sign up for open enrollment, but they warn the program is unaffordable. Russ Angela, the Supreme Court is stacked with high profile cases this term, and this case is no different. Back inside the court, the justices wrestled with what the word sex was intended to mean when it was written back in 1964. Justice Ginsburg sided with the plaintiffs who say it's long been expanded to include sexual harassment and sex stereotyping. Russ Angela, I sat down with EPA Administrator Andrew Wheeler earlier today. He's pushing back on those criticisms. He I talked to Agriculture Secretary Sonny Perdue, who says the mandate will bring farmers much needed certainty. Even as Democrats tried to pin down evidence of obstruction, Mueller remained tight lipped vowing to only stick to the details in the report. TikTok declined to appear at the Tuesday hearing, but they insist all American data is safely secured in the U.S. The FTC chairman says that the $170 million fine is about equal to the profit generated from ads aimed at kids. This action may well have brought our nation closer to another endless war. Democrats say they feared the worst as Iran promises revenge for the U.S. airstrike that targeted and killed one of Iran's most powerful and prominent military figures. The question we have to be asking ourselves today is whether Qasem Soleimani is more dangerous to the United States alive or dead. Democratic Senator Chris Murphy says the White House should have consulted with Congress before the airstrike that killed General Qasem Soleimani. By midday Friday, the Pentagon ordered an additional 3,000 troops to the Middle East to prepare for counterattacks. We did not take action to start a war. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo says Soleimani was responsible for the deaths of hundreds of American servicemen and women and was plotting more attacks. The risk of doing nothing was enormous. Iran has always been the big bully on the block. Kansas Republican Senator and Marine veteran Pat Roberts says Iran brought this on themselves. You can't sit by and do nothing. There had to be a response. Illinois Republicans Rodney Davis and Adam Kinzinger agree. Will there be escalation? Yes, but the escalation is not on our part. We're finally responding to continued provocation. Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell says the Trump administration will brief the entire For Senate now. on the attack early next week. In Washington, Raquel Martin. LGBTQ advocates and conservative groups rallied outside the steps of the Supreme Court Tuesday as the justices took on three historic cases that could decide if LGBTQ Americans are protected from workplace discrimination under the 1964 Civil Rights Act. What happened to me was wrong. Amy Stevens is the transgender woman at the center of one case. Her attorney, David Cole, with the ACLU, argues that the funeral homeowners who fired her for refusing to follow their gender-based dress code violated the law. All we are asking the court to do is to recognize that transgender people have the same rights. Back inside the court, the justices wrestled with what the word sex was intended to mean when it was written back in 1964. Justice Ginsburg sided with the plaintiffs who say it's long been expanded to include sexual harassment and sex stereotyping. Americans and American businesses should be able to rely on what the law says. Thomas Rost and his wife own the funeral home. They say they simply followed the existing law. Now we face severe penalties because the ACLU is trying to change the law out from under us. Their lawyer John Burr says changing the definition will hurt women in sports and in private women only spaces like bathrooms and domestic violence shelters. The ACLU's attempt to redefine sex creates unfair situations for women and girls. The justices will have until June to issue a ruling. It's a phenomenal deal. There appears to be a truce in the trade war with China. President Trump announced early Friday the two countries have reached a preliminary trade agreement. The farmers are going to have to go out and buy much larger tractors 
because it means a lot of business. The president says China has agreed to purchase at least $50 billion in U.S. agriculture goods. And Midwest lawmakers are celebrating the news. Iowa Senator Chuck Grassley tweeting, quote, This will help Iowa export agriculture products to China, particularly soybeans and pork. Iowa Congresswoman Cindy Axney says she's encouraged. That's really what we're going to need to really see prices drive up. And that's the hope. The American Farm Bureau Federation says farmers have taken a beating the past two years. It's been very tough. Hopefully this gets us back on the kind of the global playing field. Dale Moore is the executive vice president of the American Farm Bureau Federation. He says after months of disappointing trade negotiations and false starts, this deal will give farmers new hope. We are excited. Uh, we appreciate the news. Uh, we're anxious to see the details. The White House has yet to release those details, but says it's ready to work on phase two. Because of the deal, the U.S. will not slap additional tariffs on Chinese goods that had been scheduled for Sunday. But the president says current tariffs will remain in place. Uh, they'll be used as a uh, negotiating table for the phase two deal. Ukrainians who prefer to play by the old corrupt rules sought to remove me. Former U.S. Ambassador to Ukraine Marie Yovanovitch says the Trump administration put national security at risk when they sided with corrupt Ukrainian leaders who wanted her out. I still find it difficult to comprehend that foreign and private interests were able to undermine U.S. interests in this way. Let me get this straight. You are effective at fighting corruption in the Ukraine. Fighting that corruption was important to the national security of the United States, and you were punished. Yovanovitch says the administration launched a public smear, documented in the president's July phone call with President Zelensky, now at the center of the impeachment inquiry. The attacks continued during the hearing, with President Trump taking to Twitter, saying everywhere Yovanovitch worked, quote, turned bad. It's very intimidating. We take this kind of witness intimidation and obstruction of inquiry very seriously. While some Republicans condemned the president's tweets, others came to his defense, saying the president has the right to fire any diplomat he'd like. The president has a right to have their own foreign policy and to make their own decision. And Republicans say nothing impeachable happened. So that is not what went on here. At the White House, President Trump ripped into the hearings. In the history of our country, there has never been a disgrace like what's going on right now. Both public and private impeachment hearings continue next week. Once the pro-democracy protest in Hong Kong, Congress is sending a united message. We stand with you. Let the bells of freedom ring in Hong Kong. Thursday, with nearly unanimous support, lawmakers sent the Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act to the president's desk. A day of great bipartisanship. The bill would apply sanctions against Chinese officials who commit human rights violations against Hong Kong protesters and puts pressure on China to continue the special democratic rights currently enjoyed in Hong Kong. Senator Mark Rubio was the lead in the Senate. Every year, the Secretary of State has to certify whether or not Hong Kong remains autonomous. The president hasn't said he'll sign the bill, and the Chinese government is hoping not. Beijing officials say it'll only derail negotiations and the ongoing trade war. I think we ought to be standing up to Beijing at every opportunity. Senator Josh Hawley, a vocal critic of Beijing. They've been taking away our jobs. They've been stealing our intellectual property. Is calling on the United Nations to join the U.S. and condemn China's continued violations. 85,000 Americans live in Hong Kong, so it's time to put the nations of the world on record. Bill Reich, a trade expert with the Center for Strategic and International Studies, says China can't afford to walk away from the table. If the Chinese leave, then that allows Trump to blame them for everything, and it opens the door to further tariffs, which I don't think they want. Reich predicts President Trump will sign the bill. In Washington, Raquel Martin.